Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my video. So in this video, I want to go over what inspires me and motivates me as a software developer and has kind of like got my career where it is right now and keeps me going with my side projects and just keeps me having fun with uh, doing coding. So I made a bit of a list here and uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it. So the first kind of key thing that I always talk about is making a plan, basically. It's pretty obvious, but uh, I mean, if you wake up let's say you're a teenager, let's say you finish high school, let's say you finish university, whatever it happens to be. And at some point you ask yourself like, well, what do I wanna do? And if you can have that honest discussion with yourself, eventually you should probably come to some conclusion and then make a plan. Uh, for me, eventually after travel and after doing computer repair and that kind of stuff, I decided I really wanna do software development. I've always kind of liked it. I I've got the story where, oh, I was a software developer as a kid, which uh, is kind of like saying, okay, well, you already have to have been a kid to do software development like started really early is what I'm saying, but I don't think that's the case really. I, I think it's just kind of the point that it, it's what I gravitated towards. So whenever you get into it, whenever you dis discover like what software development is, if you gravitate towards that, th then this video is for you basically. It, it, if it's gonna be hard for you or if you're always like, oh, I, I'm not really sure, but uh, the money's great, that kind of thing, this video is not for you. Like I don't have advice for people that just wanna grind a career basically. Uh, for those kind of people, I really suggest you got to look inward and find something you like. And if your job is a grind, then your life will be a grind, basically. And it's not something I recommend. So th these tips and what I'm doing is kind of how I discovered that software development is what I want to do and why I've made plans to move forward with it. <clears throat> so some of the ways I make plans uh, is having like a note-taking app. So for me, I use Google Keep, uh, but everybody has their own apps. Like if you see here, I got post-its on the wall. You can just write post-its, basically, or whatever it happens to be. Carry a notebook, I don't know. Uh, but whenever I have ideas or thoughts or anything like that about almost anything, really, uh, I like to write it down. Like, I don't trust my memory too much. Or if at the end of the day, I'm trying to think, like, well, what are all the things that I thought about so that I can kind of consolidate all that into, like, something that's of value for tomorrow, basically. Um, and before I used to not write things down, I didn't couldn't remember a lot of that stuff and i don't know if other people can if you got a photographic memory great but i suggest writing stuff down it's really helpful and it's, it's a great way to make a plan basically um and then another part for for making the plan i mean i've written it down here as a notice to take initiative which is kind of like after you already have the plan but i guess what i mean by that and what i've noticed in my career and just kind of getting to where i am is you have to work with what you have kind of so like my first job when I moved to, to British Columbia was just doing like a, a really small startup, a couple people, an ad I found on Craigslist while I was still living in Chile, actually. So you never know what it's going to be. So now here and now I'm uh, like seven, eight years later, just to finish the story here, I'm at Microsoft now and it's my dream job. I'm happy with it. Not every day is perfect. Not every day is exactly what I want to do, but this is where I want to be. And it's it's the way that I planned it. So in that way, I think it's it's good advice because it worked for me. So it's my success story in that way. Uh, because I took initiative in, in like these small jobs to go, well, what else can I learn? Let me just try to to make things that haven't been made yet. Or, or when React first started getting popular, like I wasn't really early on to React. But when I heard like, oh, everyone's using that. Okay, well, how can I at my job integrate that and find those opportunities? And, and you have to find them. They're not going to come handed to you. Like that's one thing I've noticed is people don't just give you those opportunities. You have to make them yourself. Um. And then what else have I written here? Where do you want to be? How will you get there? How have others done it? Yeah, so it's kind of what I'm talking about. But one key point to that is the how have others done it. That's something I like to try to study and understand. Like once you know where you want to be at a certain point in your life, you can see, well, how did other people get there? And I'm not saying like you don't want to get into the point where you're comparing people and you're saying, oh, I feel bad because I'm not at, at the part at the level where that person is. I wouldn't suggest that. But definitely to, to see like, well, how did they get there? And it, it doesn't matter what age you are when you started. It's about seeing their success story and seeing how you can turn that into your success story, basically. Um, all right, so the next note I had here was to have goals. Um, it kind of goes with plans. I guess it doesn't necessarily. Like you can make all these plans and not really know where your goal posts are. Like I guess when I say make goals, you almost have goal posts then too, like these places where you're at a certain point and you go, yes, I've done this. I've done that. This is what I wanted to do. Um, so I've kind of had that a little bit throughout my career, learning React, getting my side projects going uh, and having some some success with that. Not completely yet. Uh, getting in at Microsoft, of course, was a huge thing for me. 
And now that I'm at Microsoft, I'm at level SE2, it's called. So the next level that I'm hoping to get to is senior. So that's my next goal, is that I want to be uh, considered a senior developer in the eyes of Microsoft, basically, for myself, you know? I mean, it's not about the money or any of that stuff. Perhaps it's a tiny bit about the title, but it's about getting getting them to say that I, I'm at that level, basically. Because then I've proven it to myself, that was my plan. I mean... It's not for everybody. Some people, it's more about the money or the title or that kind of thing. And I'm not saying it's not a not a little bit about that, but uh, it's about having that goal and, and succeeding in it. Same with when I say my side project, how that's like, a, not only is it something I'm working on for code, but it's also my personal website and a goal that I've had. This is since I've been a kid was to have like a really cool personal website. And, and now that I'm older and I'm an adult, I, I go, how can I take this idea further? And I've taken it to, okay, well, let's have the best personal website in the world. And well, what does that mean to have that? And, and then it's just been working through that goal and trying to think, well, what does it mean? Well, what are my goalposts to getting there? Uh, at this point in my my thinking on it, I'm thinking that it's to win a Webby Award, uh, which I know the Webby's like, I mean, you could always say, what is the pinnacle? What's the, what's the tallest mountain? What's to say that you are there? I don't know. For me, I've picked that goal. It's not an easy goal. Uh, so if I get it, I'll be happy with that. And then I have to find new goals, which I'm excited about. That's the scary thing is achieving your goals because then you have to find new ones. Uh, and on that note, another note I have here for having goals is to dream big. And that's something that I've been doing. So let's say for my side project, where right now I'm using React and I'm using all these other frameworks that kind of are already built up. So I'm I'm like standing on the shoulders of giants for a lot of the stuff that my site does. Not everything. I've glued a lot together myself. But long term, what I want to do is write it in, in what's called like vanilla JS, where it's just like no frameworks, nobody helping you, just from like the basic principles, make everything. And I'm not there yet, but maybe in 10 years, maybe in 20 years, you know, who knows? Uh, I mean, I, I don't have a, it, it's not like if in five years I don't make it, oh, I give up, you know, that dream's done. Now I got to go be a coal miner or something like that. That's just not how I, I, I think, basically. So to me, I'm it's all just part of the journey and I'm having fun. And if I'm not having fun, that's when I need to think, what do I need to do? What do I need to change? Uh, and, and another some other dream bigs that other people can do, like like I'm talking big, like make the next React, make the next uh, Rust lang language, make the next Windows, you know, like why not? Why why can't one person do it? Um, and, and on that note, let's get to my next point, which is finding mentors or role models. Um, for me, it's been more role models because I'm not the kind of person that's going to go ask somebody, well, hey, how'd you do it? You know, I don't want to hear their answer. I want to I want to study them almost like. Um, and I, I don't want to hear like their, ver their answer to me. They're trying to give, they're trying to give me something of value by saying that, which it can be good. And I'm happy to be able to talk to mentors, but I like the process of trying to understand from the outside to, to see how I could do it. And, and that's where I'm more of like role models, people to look up to people that I, ha I haven't met and I don't expect to meet. Maybe I will one day. It'd be cool. Um, so, so some of the examples, like let's say F Fabrice Bellard. I, I don't have a link to it. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's the guy that made like FFmpeg, QEMU, Q like big big software basically for people that know this kind of software. And he's just one guy making it by himself. And he's just done a ton of stuff like that and doesn't get a ton of credit for it. I mean, he does, but people don't really know who he is. Uh, and it's people like that. When I see those people and, and like that person's living his dream. Another guy, Dave Cutler, I saw an interview with him. He's working at Microsoft, 81 years old, still working there and just having a great time. You know, that's, it's like the idea of retirement. It's like, what are you giving up? What are you quitting? Like, like you're literally tired or, or you just like, oh, I'm done with that job. I never liked for six, for 30 years or whatever it happens to be like that to me is the idea of retiring is like, is like finishing your loss. You know, it's like you had a job you didn't like, and now you're done with it. You didn't win. You're just done losing, you know, uh, I mean, not to har not to harsh on retirement, and if you do get tired, or if you want to retire, or if you just don't want to do it anymore, sure. But it, if, it, but again, what the people I'm talking to are people that want to do this. So if it's something you like doing, it's something you think about, it's a hobby. I mean, what is it that makes people stop hobbies? I don't know. I mean, that's that's like another discussion about passion and motivation, which I guess I'm talking about here. But maybe these are the things that keep me going, and and maybe if people had these, they would keep their hobbies and their motivations. I don't know. Or maybe in 20 years, I'll say that I give all this up and then I just like go to woodworking. Who knows? Um, and I've got other examples of other role models. George Hotz is another one. Um, Elon Musk is kind of a, he's a hot topic right now, but I've been pretty inspired by some of the stuff he's done, even in software stuff. Like I know, I know he's him and a million other people are involved in all those things, but some of the stories is just like, oh, cool. Like 
I could do that somehow, like in my own version of it. And, and that's like a motivation in itself is having role models to like, just to see what they've done, you know? And, and I, again, to the role model part, I write, uh, find common traits that you admire about them and try to emulate those. I guess that's part of the like fake it till you make it thing. I really do believe in that because it's like, it's almost like, what's the difference? Like, even when you're faking it, only you believe you're faking it and everyone else thinks you're already do making it. And if you didn't believe that, like if you all of a sudden reset your memory and people are like, yeah, this is who you are. What's the difference almost, you know? So are you ever really faking it? You just, you just are whoever you project basically. And at some point you accept that that person's you or, and then you've made it, you know, I don't know. So that's kind of uh, something that I wrestle with, I guess, or think about. So the next piece I have here, and this is important, and this also talks about having a passion for it, is to keep practicing. You basically never stop practicing. I mean, that's like where people say, oh, the software industry is hard because things are always changing. It's like, that's cool that things are changing. Like, it'd be boring if things didn't. I don't want to be like, there, I'm done learning. You know, I want there to be new things. I'm excited for them to try them out, to see how they are either advantageous or not worth using, you know? Uh, and it's it's not a hassle to me to learn that in the same way that it's not a hassle when a new TV episode comes out. You know, I'm excited to know what's next. Uh, and if you're not like that in your job, well, I guess that's okay, according to society. But at the same time, it's like, do you want that to be that way? And if not, then like, you, you need to think of something else. You need to change your own life. Um, I'm not sure who I'm talking to with that. But I, I know people like that where they're, they don't want to... Like it's like the idea of practicing it, What are you practicing? You're having fun. It's like people that are surfing. It's like, is that guy practicing surfing or is he just surfing? You know? Uh, and that kind of gets into the flow too. That's where, when I talk about, this is important is like when I code, I'm in the flow. I, hours could just go by and I don't even notice it. And, and that's another thing where you need to find your thing. That's your flow. And that's where you should dedicate your time to is to find a way to make your thing that puts you in a flow state. If people are familiar with that, the kind of just like where you lose track of time and you're just like, you're having such a great time. I mean, it can happen in a lot of different things, but there's a difference between zoning out and like being in this flow state where you're, you're interactive with it. And that's what I feel like when I'm coding and I'm just constantly jumping from one problem to the next and pr problem. They're not problems to me. They're exciting to, to, to like run into these things where it's like, how did, how did this not be what I expected? Uh, and what's, it's like a mystery, you know, it's like a Sherlock's Holmes mystery programming sometimes to me anyways um so so here are some notes for i had for keep practicing yeah treat your job as a craft and you're a craftsman i mean i i have a book somewhere where it's like software is craftsmanship and i remember even when i just saw that book title i was like of course you know and, and this goes to like where people that say oh they quit they quit software development and they become woodworkers it's like great is that is that the thing you found that's your craft that you can be a craftsman in then that's where you should have been probably and i'm happy you found that but for me I, I'm whittling away at the code. I'm happy to to polish, you know, the the corners of the code for for hours, weeks, uh, and I've done that a lot with my project. What what I would call practicing, or I wouldn't even call this practicing. I call it polishing, where I'm just going over the same feature over and over and being like, can I change one line, or or is this exactly the way that it could be forever? Do I ever have a reason to come back to this and improve this? And if I do, let's do it. You know, let's get into it and have fun with it. Um. So yeah, that's again, where personal projects are really important because it's, it's not, a, it's not like people are always like, oh, you need personal projects for work or for this or for that. It's just for yourself in the same way that a woodworker might have something in his garage, something he's making. That's your personal project. That's, that's your thing. You own that. You can make it however you want. You can throw it away. You can add some weird thing to it. That's yours to do, but you need that freedom because at work, you're not going to have that freedom necessarily. You can try to find it in other tasks. But there's always going to, but it's, it's a group activity then. It's a team effort, which is fine. It's a different kind of thing. But if you want to go deep and you want to have that sense of ownership, that's where your personal projects are just, they make sense, you know? Unless you're the kind of person, unless you're like the architect at the company where you can just take something away and, and make it and then it becomes yours. And I have people like that every place I've worked where that's like that guy's baby a little bit. I mean, it's great when those people exist because then they actually care about it. Unfortunately, there's a lot less of those people. Uh, and that's just like a situation with work. But that's, again, where you need the personal project. You, you just need that, I feel like. that For me, I do. Some people don't. But it'd be weird for me not to have a personal project, I feel like. Um, to me, it's a creative outlet. I think of it like art, basically. And and kind of like art, I mean, you can you look at some person's painting, and they could say they spent a 1,000 hours on that. It's like, that's insane, you know? Uh, I've spent many, many thousands of hours on my project already. 
Uh, and then, yeah, one other note I had for that is just find a way to do the thing that you daydream about. Like for me with my personal project and a lot of the notes and I write are just like just randomly throughout the day. I'm thinking, oh, that could be cool. Or I'll see somebody using a computer a certain way or a phone or, or see a certain website and I'll think, oh, yeah, I could I could do that. Or here's how here's how a twist on that could be done my way. Um, and it's the same with people like seeing annoyances. Like if I'm at the McDonald's ordering screen and I see like lag or, or, or when I send a message on Messenger and it does a weird thing, I think how how it could be different. And uh, and then I want to integrate that into my own site or whatever it happens to be. You're just I'm just always thinking of that stuff and like how it kind of relates to I could make it my own way or I could do that. So you got to follow that kind of stuff, I think, if you're going to be successful and happy in your job. And basically, then it's not a job kind of thing. That's like that saying they say, like, find something you love and you don't work a day in your life. Uh, I think that's that's a cool idea. But I think like you're always going to have the work. Work is like the thing you don't want to do. So even when you're doing your dream job, it's going to be like, OK, well, now you got to send an invoice to, to get your million dollars. It's like, well, I don't want to make an invoice. That's boring. It's like, well, there's the work, you know, so you're always going to be working. But it's about finding, it's about like the balance and, and being able to find at least some joy, if not more than 50% of your job being joyful, I would say, or better, you know, but it's not all going to be perfect. Uh, and then finally, this one's key is you got to believe in yourself. Um, there were times a long time ago, or not that long ago, but when I was like a teenager in my 20s where I didn't really believe in myself necessarily, or I just didn't think about it that way. I didn't think that I could do that or for whatever reason, I just hadn't thought deeply about it. But now I think I can do almost anything that I put my mind to. Uh, I mean, I, I haven't posted the video, but I've, I've traveled around the world. I mean, you can see the pictures behind me. I did that for four years and went to 40, 49 countries, 50 total that I've already been to. Uh, and I'm not special. That wasn't that wasn't hard. That was the same kind of stuff I'm talking about, but to travel before I decided it was it's time to do my career kind of thing. It, travel became my life. It became the only thing I thought about is how to save a buck here or how I could do this to get this deal or, or whatever it happened to be. That became my obsession. And it's probably something in my head. I've probably got some kind of weird thing where I get obsessed about certain things for, for years and I can just kind of hold on to it. And other people are going to have trouble with that. Um, but that's where I guess you got to go to a system like these points that I'm making where you have to keep yourself honest, motivate yourself. You have to take initiative. You have to, it's going to be hard kind of thing. And to the believe in yourself notes, I got some notes here like, yeah, the situation is never going to be perfect. But you can control yourself. You can you can you can always get better. It's like if all of a sudden all the jobs dry up, which is pretty much how things are at this moment. It's like good. Well, now I have some time to get better. You know, uh, and I mean, of course, you're going to have financial concerns, and like those are always going to like be burdens, and that's going to be like how things you have to solve. Uh, I'm I'm the same way. Like I have tons of money problems, and we're constantly like uh, always on the edge or that kind of thing. Or I'm always like, how can I do this and this and this? But it's like that doesn't change from your belief in like your dreams and stuff. And it's like, you have to, you have to, that's like a different kind of balance, like the money dream balance, you know, like the work life balance is, is like the money dream balance, I guess. And that's something that's just the reality of, of the situation is like, it's the situation is never going to be perfect, but you just have to take it as it is and try to be like, well, you know, I know I'm going to make it. Um, and then, yeah, in regards to that and about persistence, I actually had a quick little story about that it was like, now that I'm in Microsoft, when I knew I was going to make it to Microsoft was was like um, the first time I tried to get there and got rejected, basically. And they called me and said, you know, we're, we don't we're not going to move you forward to the next round. Like I went through all the inter the interviews, which is hard to get to as well. Like that's a whole other battle to get to the point of interviews. But I got there. I did it all. I felt pretty good about it. And then I got told no. And I on the phone, I asked, you know, some feedback and I got a, I got some really good feedback. And at that point, I thought, you know. And then they said at the end, they said, well, you can apply again in six months. I thought, oh, wow. Like, so six months or so twice a year, if it took me five years, that's 10 times I could apply. I basically started doing the math thinking like, of course I'm going to get in, you know, it's just a, it's a numbers game. I just have to try again. So that kind of mentality is, I think, like what I suggest for other people. Basically, it's like, it just doesn't matter what happens. Like, you're going to do it if that's what you want to do or else like, or else what, you know, like <laughs> that's what you're here for, basically. Um, so yeah, that's something to believe, believe in yourself. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's all I really have to say. Things worth doing are doing, uh, are hard, but that's just part of, part of, uh, having a craft and having living and having art and expressing yourself and being creative. So hopefully that can help motivate you guys to be software developers or whatever it happens you want to be guys and girls, whoever, 
So yeah, thanks for checking out my video and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.